My name is Kamlesh Kapoor, and my topic is Indian Judiciary, How It Threatens Dharma, Common Law, and Vedic Traditions. Actually, Dharma is the <clears throat> main base, and Vedic Traditions is the evolution, evolutionary process of development of customary law and common law, which is also known as common law, not written in the Constitution. So, uh, I'm going to start and focus on uh, three themes. First, Bharat uh, identity. <clears throat> why we are not a close-knit nation and why the judiciary looks at us uh, uh, as this minority, this minority, this minority, instead of a cohesive unit. So that is uh, the main problem. And I'm going to give the global context also that when these things were being developed, uh, what was going on in the rest of the world, and what is their contribution <clears throat> to jurisprudence. <clears throat> so when we say Bharat, what comes first in our mind is, uh, is it geographical boundaries, civilizational identity, a culturally cohesive nation, or a kingdom divided in subaltern and territorial um, regions of society. Now you see how we are not seeing it as a geographical boundaries. If we see the geographical boundary, Bharat Bhartiya is uh, Hindustan, the land of Hindus. Civilizational life, it is Bharat uh, civilization. Culturally cohesive nation, again, nationality is Bhartiya. But the judiciary uh, especially because Nehru set the example um, and he divided the entire society in different categories and then those categories expanded to um, in all directions and forever. So that is the last is what is the main cause of judicial overreach and how they get away with it. Confusion about this poses a challenge that uh, am I a Bharti first or a, 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 a group identity, say, uh, Muslim or Christian. <clears throat> the identity is rooted in our Vedic traditions, which is uh, called customary common law. It is customary or common law. So it is not in the um, regulatory um, part of the government. Culture co cohesion with diverse customs was developed, evolution of custom, developed, uh, um, I mean, happened um, according to the proximity um, of uh, equator uh, to that region. Uh, in, in other words, the geographical location, regional variations and all that, customs depend on that if you are in forest or where. Guidelines for socio-personal behavior, um, this was part of the um, Vedic traditions. And this is not to be regulated. Some traditions are in the form of Samriti, but many of them are oral, gathas, Vedic chants. Of course, now they are written. So common law is not part of the constitution. Now, what is Niti? Our ancient uh, system, uh, which uh, affected or dispensed uh, justice, was in the domain of Rajidharma, uh, niti, but where it stopped and where it ended. Rajya Dharma has a domain, but uh, does it uh, also affect the common law? Not. So th there were laws and rules. Primary duty was to protect the nation from lawlessness. Society, there were rules. Roots of Rajya Dharma, Samriti, and as I said, and of course, sometimes the Rajgurus also interpreted uh, for them uh, what Vidur Niti was and uh, the whole Bhisham Niti and everything. So, Rajya Dharma does not regulate common law. And this is to be understood. Just as um, uh, uh, England has uh, no written constitution and the common law, customary law, is separate than the legal system or the bills which were passed. Now the global contest is ideology-driven power base, which means uh, some profit 
or some uh, philosopher like Marx uh, developed an ideology and that uh, affected uh, whether it was king or autocrats or oligarchies, uh, whatever they said that was considered as the law. And uh, the papacy, the uh, church uh, from uh, <clears throat> Vatican endorses that. And that is the as far as the judicial uh, system went or justice system went. Nomadic tribes of Arabian common law was the rule of sword, massacre, am ambush, subjugation, expansion, the whole bit. Now, when the British rule and colonial, uh, colonial exploitation came, of course they exploited. Um, that is the purpose of mercantilism and colonialism, imperialism. So the British rule, they did so much uh, for the country in uh, promoting Christianity uh, here and there. They divided the nation in landlords and stuff, but they had no impact on traditions, ceremonies, fairs, past and festivals. I grew up in India, which was uh, under the British rule, and uh, there used to be processions and uh, all the merrymaking and ceremonial things uh, never once I heard that there was stone pelting or any kind of uh, um, Home Secretary of Britain ruling against a tradition. They respected the common law, or we can say they left it alone. Now, formation of Indian judiciary, what happened? When the written constitution was uh, uh, drafted, I mean, um, took about one and a half years, it was not rooted in English jurisprudence and it was not uh, part of the uh, copying from American constitution because American constitution has a different way of appointing judges and getting approval. So here uh, in India, uh, a strange system, a certain uh, group uh, of uh, judges, um, favorite of Nehru, and his dynasty, uh, they appointed the chief justice and then the chief justice had, you know, one from this minority, one from this minority and pick and choose uh, to keep a balance between the 79% majority and the 21% minorities. So it protects the politicians and their mafia and every other criminal group but not the individuals or the common people. It should be the other way around. The judiciary is to dispense justice from the government, uh, for the people and from the excesses of the government. It helped perpetuate Nehru, Nehruvian dynasty. Judiciary at every level promoted corruption. You pay the money, you get the verdict in your favor. Political experiences. Omit the name if it is minority um, and the victim is uh, minority, then expand it, uh, highlight it, um, go to any line. But like a Godra, uh, the way it was blown up. So political expediency is there and of course it is criminal system. Indian constitution, so the role of judiciary um, is to make sure that the government does not interfere in uh, basic human rights of the nation. Now, what kills this equality? The idea of equality and privacy, right to privacy, right to freedom of religion, everything is abrogated. Once we have reservation and discrimination, and then there are several sets of uh, judicial law, Muslims have their own judiciary, and there's no uniformity anywhere. So Hindu court bill was absolutely unnecessary and that's a deliberate tinkering um, by the government in the Hindu, uh, anything connected with the Hindu dharma, society or temples or anything. So judiciary emerges as the most biased institution, putting Hindu 
socio cultural majority under a scanner. Every time something happens, if it is a Hindu which is uh, aggr uh, aggressor, of course, uh, the verdict comes quickly. And even in the middle of the night, the judge down, downs his uh, rope and goes ahead. So open assault, nowadays it is open assault on customs and violation of Hindu common law. Judicial overreach has <clears throat> recently, uh, in the last uh, 40 years that I remember, 50 years, um, these are the infractions where it has uh, encroached deliberately and uh, tried to subjugate or change Hindu social system or dharmic um, uh, faith traditions. This is the book. I have given a few examples here. This is an uh, about 780 page book. Uh, it is a partition, uh, legacy of M.K. Gandhi. And of course, since Nehru was appointed by, um, by Gandhi, so he was a disciple of, you know, Muslim Swabs and blah, blah, blah. Now, this uh, uh, legacy continued uh, again with the uh, blessings of Gandhi. How? He approved um, that uh, I gave Gandhi the name to Khans. Indra Gandhi was uh, Indra Khan after marriage. So hostile verdicts and verdict ceremony, that it is superstitious. Temple traditions and ceremonies, they're ridiculed. And uh, this tradition is not proper and that physical attack on the processions, regulating, this is the fundamental uh, uh, encroachment and cultural erosion, uh, sexual orientation. Who cares what happens, you know? Uh, homosexual relations were always there all over the world. And what happens uh, in the bedroom is none of anybody's uh, business. So allowing and recognizing by the justice system is meaningless and uh, in fact uh, ridiculous. And then the Bali lights are criticized for uh, and uh, fireworks are criticized for pollution, holy is water pollution, shivratri is wastage of uh, uh, milk and the whole thing. So Sabri Mala temple, um, some Christian or uh, um, Muslim says that we have a right uh, during the childbearing age to go to the temple against the traditions of the temple. This was really uh, uh, an outrage. So erosion of culture and then um, all this is mentioned in the big book. So if I start doing that, each one of them, then, you know, it will take uh, forever. It will be like reading the book all over. And I rode ahead. What is now? Are we really free? Are we really free, uh, free of fear? Are we really independent? And I'm just reading in uh, Urdu, um, Jagdamba Prasad Mishra's word, Shaheedon ki chitaon par lagenge har baras mele, Vatan par mitne walon ka yahi namo nisha hoga. Kabhi ye bhi din aega, jab apna raj dekhenge, apna raj. Jab apni hi zameen hogi, apna asman hoga. And this, these two lines deny Hindus, they is not apna raj, not apni zameen. And of course, nothing above the ground. And here is the Gitanjali's uh, verses from uh, where the mind is without fear and the head is held high. Into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country away. And now, my question uh, to everybody as, um, as a mother, as a grandmother, as an activist, and as a just awakening and shaking up the Hindu psyche. To question, are we in that heaven of freedom? Are we free from fear? And do we own anything, even our own right to personal right? So standing, we are now standing in the in between democracy and anarchy, and Hindus have to take the wool from their eyes. I have given a lot of ideas in the book, 
And uh, I would like that people uh, go through the that chapter relevant. I know it is a daunting work to read the entire work, but read the relevant portion on corrupt judiciary and then add on uh, your own ideas how to improve. Having said that, a lot more can be said, but um, this is just to shake up what was, what has been evolution, global context. And uh, with that, I think uh, this is enough to shake up Hindu side. Namaste. Thank you very much.